Welcome to Uprising, Damien Lee, Andy Garcia. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Damien, That's a very see. provocative uh, name for a show. Yes, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's a morning show, yeah. Uprising. Oh, I see. I thought it was a, kind of a revolution. You saw that's what I yeah. Well, there's yeah. a double meaning. Yeah. 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 Uh, Damien, let me start with you. Um, you wrote and directed this film about a, a very uh, political issue that, of course, um, parallels what has happened in Latin American countries. Bolivia comes to mind with Bechtel. How did you come up with the story? What motivated you to, to write this and direct this film? Uh, I was working... Uh, for several years on doing a uh, film with global water deprivation with the United Nations. And when I was researching uh, this film, I kept on stumbling upon certain really interesting facts to do with water. Uh, one of them being what was happening with the water wars and water conflicts in South America. The other one being that, that every one in every 1,200 lakes is exploding, merimictic. Uh, which is fascinating. That's a whole different thing, of, of course. But then the last major lake explosion happened in 1984 in Lake Nigos in Cameroon. 2,400 people died when the lake exploded. They, they died from asphyxiation. When the lake explodes, all the oxygen is sucked out of the air around the immediate area of the lake, which is a fascinating. How does it explode? What causes what, what, the explosion? What, what, what happens is uh, it can happen for one of th three reasons. Uh, it can be a geographical formation. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it can be so uh, at, at all all three uh, uh, reasons. Uh, result in the same uh, effect. What it is, the lower levels of the, of the lake don't mix with the higher levels. So the lower levels, the sediment levels, are, are, are kept in, in the bottom. And, and as, as uh, biological material begins to uh, decay, mm -hmm. it builds up gases. gases and and eats the, and eats the, uh, yeah, and, and builds Combust, up. Yeah. Exactly. And it actually just shoots up in the air, sucks all the oxygen out. So, and, 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 um, and some um, uh, actual sinkholes, water sinkholes, you can dive down and, you, and it, it gets like a, a purple toxic. Uh, um, uh, you can actually see it mm -hmm. in the lower levels. Sure. So, yeah, so it's quite, quite interesting. And the other, and the other thing is seeing all th these water conflicts and a lot of them happening in South America that we're never getting any attention because it was happening in a non-mainstream location, um, like you say, Bolivia with Bechtel, uh, and, and, and it became illegal in some parts for, for uh, farmers, for capucinas, uh, to, 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 uh, to collect rainwater. A and I thought, well, this is an amazing situation, especially because certain aspects of the military, um, uh, U.S. military, had very strong presence in, 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 in South America, and some of these companies involved were American companies, some American and British, as Bechtel had a British partner, um, and, and, and they were privatizing water usage for the poor, uh, and, and the rates were going up. They were going up, as you, as you probably know. They were going up, which is ridiculous. So the government was allowing the, these companies to privatize the water uh, for the people, essentially for the people, and the rates were, were, were going up for the people. So the poor were becoming poor, and the disenfranchised were becoming more disenfranchised. So I thought that was a very interesting situation. And, and then if we could personalize that, um, in, in, in Andy's, uh, Andy's uh, that's one of Andy's lexicon that I've picked up during this film period, per personalize it in terms of the story of a character who, who was, was not at one, wh wh had, had, had done wrong, um, and was seeking a way back to make amends for, for, his, uh, uh, for his wrong, for his transgression against his fellow man. Um, that would be an interesting canvas to paint a personalized story on against the backdrop of, of, of water deprivation, water conflict. So let's talk about the character of Jack Bogosian that you play, Andy. You're, um, uh, you play a ex-CIA agent turned radio host, which I think was great. <laughs> um, what does your character represent to you in this film? Because as, as Damien was saying, there's a sense of wanting redemption. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's what he set up. I mean, like you said, he was a sort of CIA, a CIA operative that had has a very dark past. You know, uh, I think he was operating through his life, representing you know different f as, as factions of, uh, in our case, the uh, the American government overseas, and and he had done things. You know, probably he felt that were very good things, and, and probably were good things. You know, but then there were some other things that he was uh, involved with that maybe duped, maybe his his point of view was different at the time, whatever it is, but some stuff that was very dark. And, uh, Which we never necessarily find out. You don't have to find out. I think hopefully you see it in his pain, you know. And, you know, and you can tell that he has blood, he has blood
blood on his hands. You know, he was, uh, you know, he was, you know, and then you see through his actions later on when he goes into what he's capable of, you know, of, of doing. So I thought the dilemma of having this character who's trying to redeem his life, he has this talk show called The Truth. He's trying to sort of like bring attention to uh, situations uh, that are unjust around the world or even locally in Toronto where he's now sort of like an exile. And, uh, he gets sucked into to be called upon to go down there to rescue this gentleman um, played by Forrest Whitaker, who's got the who's got the information of what's going on down there and why people are dying, why they're being killed, and and uh, the problem is that he doesn't want to obviously do that because he doesn't want to be a, one of those guys. But when he realizes in the story that the Forrest's character is one of the people that he is very guilty about that he had a, a history with this character he had put him in prison he had you know uh, and he feels like he needs to help him out but in order to help him out he has to become the guy he used to right. that he detests the same guy that he was that's who he has to become because he knows if he doesn't become that guy he will not he will not survive that journey so there's an internal conflict and an external conflict right but he's but for 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 the sake of forest he puts his own thing aside and basically becomes the guy that he no longer, uh, you know. Sorry. Hey, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> the, the guy that he uh, that he that he that he hates that he was, you know. But he has to become him in, in order to be able to pull off this mission. So I thought that was always a, a very interesting uh, thing to play and to engage in, you know. Yeah, uh, Damien, this is a, a film that brings up issues that we often see in documentaries, not as much in feature films, particularly feature films made for a mainstream audience. Why was important for you to, to bring this issue to a mainstream audience? Well, a film um, um, has to be set on, on a particular canvas, in a particular setting, uh, a milieu. Um, and um, uh, the story of Andy's character was a very interesting story for me, um, uh, seeking uh, a man having become what he once was to, to find redemption. Um, uh, so, but if we can set it in, in a situation that it's, it's not about money, it, it's not about um, um, uh, saving his children or, or, or a personal vendetta, but if we can find a situation um, that, uh, that we as people allowed to transpire that has become onerous and difficult for us to deal with. Because, I, I, mean, um, I mean, Andy in many ways is his own villain in the film. Um, and and uh, um, that becomes interesting in, in, in terms of the archetypes uh, and what is being represented. And at the same time, if we can if we can have something that has residue in the film, has the possibility of, of uh, uh, impacting uh, in terms of thought process and consciousness, um, uh, then then the film can can have a, an afterglow, perhaps, or, or an impact in terms of how we look at things or what our consciousness is, and and, and maybe expanding our consciousness to be more conscious of the, the environment and, and how we live within this uh, environment. Well, um, it's an American company that's at the heart of the sort of, that, that symbolizes the evil, if you will, quote unquote. No, it's a Canadian um, company. Oh, it's a Canadian, it's a Canadian company. company. Yeah, it's North American. Yeah. But it's, it's a Western company. It's a Western it's, it's, company. And, and, um, uh, and, and a lot of times you have these situations where companies that are based here in the Northwest of the world um, are doing dirty deeds abroad, and I'm wondering, Andy, whether you think um, there is enough awareness among ordinary people that live in countries like the U.S. and Canada about what corporations are doing in the name of good, because, of course, the promise is always, we'll bring you cheap water, but as Damien was saying, the water price goes up. People in Bolivia ended up having to pay just to get rainwater. So do you feel that your role in this film is helping to raise that kind of political awareness that is so necessary here? Well, first of all, I don't think it's uh, it's only in, in it's only attributed to the U.S. and Canada. I think uh, people in the European countries and well, ex Britain, Britain was wonderful at that. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, for a hundred years, they or maybe two hundred years, they, they they ran roughshod over the whole world. Yeah, right. So I mean, this has been going on, you know, uh, for centuries. You know, so it's 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 a global responsibility to be just. Uh, and and you know, if a movie like this brings 
uh, a, a sort of more macro aware, awareness to the people, citizens who, listen, we're all preoccupied on our daily level to uh, to resolve our issues for our families daily, just here in Los Angeles, you know, get your kid to school, get to work on time, pay the rent, pay the water, <laughs> make sure you have water. You know, some countries, you know, you have to walk for miles just to get a, a mm-hmm. bucket of drinking water. That's not even pure. You got to get it back home and then you got to boil it and you got to put a tablet in it and then you got to, yeah. and you, then your, your next day, all you're trying to do is, you know, go again on that journey in order to get water for the next, you know, it's like all you're doing is living to get water. Uh, so these are issues that are out there, and it's good to kind of remind people, hey, you know, don't complain so much about your problems here. There's a lot of people that have greater pro- problems than we have, you know. Do, do you feel that you uh, also had a sort of political or personal awakening um, when you read the screenplay or decided to take the role? I was aware of these issues, you know, uh, so I was aware of them, which is why I, I, I found it that it was. Uh, and he's very politically uh, aware. Period. So I wasn't. I wasn't. It wasn't like I was going. Really, that really happened? No, I'm going. No, I, you know, I'm aware of that. But, but the fact that there's an opportunity to tell to weave it in, into into a genre piece that can reach an audience that would normally either research that or read it in the paper or have the time to really make themselves aware of it it's it's a nice caveat to it all you know yeah. so it's not just entertainment there is some some social value to it you know i'd love to talk to you damien about the the other casting forced Whitaker playing this uh, activist who's labeled an eco terrorist but helps uh, foment a peasant uprising his wife played by eva Longoria. Um, what led to some of these casting decisions? I mean, these are, you know, Andy, of course, just very uh, experienced actors um, in Hollywood in a film that, you know, is um, addressing a tough issue, isn't necessarily, I mean, can be considered to be part of a sort of indie genre today. Um, I, I think the, well, first of all, I think Andy... 90% was, of the movies are in the <laughs> genre. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Andy was very instrumental in, in, in bringing a lot of the cast on mm-hmm. board uh, because um, a lot of the cast we worked with came to work with us in, in the Dominican Republic. And Which is where the... F- Film was uh, filmed. A lot of it was, yes, yeah, so filmed in, in Canada and in the Dominican Republic. Um, so Andy had some very good uh, resources there in terms of actor and actor relationships. Is the first time you guys have worked together, though? Us, yes. Yeah, but yeah. I've been in the Dominican before working, made movies there, and so. Yeah. So that was very beneficial to us because he had done a movie not that long ago there, um, Lost City, and and he had really plumbed the depths of, of good talent. Of working in the Dominican Republic in terms of production and and actors as well, so that was extremely beneficial. And he was very generous in terms of sharing and making that available to us. Um, and as well, he had a relationship with uh, Eva Longoria, um, and which was beneficial, of course, as well. And and Forrest, um, I always liked the the um, consciousness that I felt was being expressed by by Forrest a, a, as a being, and and, um, and I knew he was concerned with political issues. Is he the sort of conscience of of the sure. of the film? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had worked with also with Forrest in another movie where actually I tortured him in the movie and cut his fingers off. But that was wow. <laughs> he came back for more. <laughs> 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 and, uh, he's a wonderful. I admire him so much. But yeah, like I, like like uh, uh, Damien said, when we when the name of Forrest uh, would, came up, and we said, you know, who could personify this character? Immediately, you think of Forrest because it's part of his nature. You know, this kind yeah. of thing. You know. Yeah, very very much so. So, and, and Forrest is is, is involved in, in, in uh, um, political concerns, and and there are times when when Obama has not been able to speak, he has tapped Forrest to go and speak on his, his behalf, and and. Um, and uh, and it's interesting because in, in real life, Forrest often says, life is about service. Life is about service. We, we must serve. We all must serve. So it's a very interesting thing. It's, it's Dylan-esque, I suppose, you mm-hmm. know, from the song. Mm-hmm. You know, you got everyone's going to serve somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but, but he, he, he means that in a, in a very macro and spiritual yeah, and, sense. And, and very genuine, yeah. yeah. Um, when you make a, a film that's very political, it's a challenge to also make sure that it's entertaining and that yes. people are going to stay in their seats and people yes. are going to be yeah. you know, excited and moved sure. and, and, and enter- entertained. How yeah, did you walk that? line? Yeah. How did you navigate that? Well, I, I, I think... Put Eva Longoria <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. So, um, I, I think the thing is, is, is that we have quite a bit of physical action in the film. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I think uh, you, 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 have, you can have a cerebral intellectual line, spiritual line running, but you need that physical line running as well. I mean, we're physical beings, we're spiritual beings, and, and so you need to have that balance. And, and, and as, 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 as deep as your, your spirituality or as your intellectuality uh, goes, uh, you have to, I, th- I think, counterbalance that with a sense of, of physical anchoring. Uh, I mean, to be 
to entertain. I mean, we have a responsibility to entertain. I mean, it was just a People standard. are voluntarily coming into the theater and spending their money. Yeah, exactly. You can't stand on a soapbox. And, I mean, I mean they can go to church or school for that, right? I mean, we, we have to allow a certain degree of escapism. But I mean, I really think when we go to see a movie, we, we, we go to be entertained, but we also look for wisdom. We look for painless wisdom. And I think that's how films work. We don't have to go through the experience that Andy went through in his character. Uh, we, can, we can garner his wisdom. We can garner the impact of, of what came to his consciousness from, from sitting in our seats and, 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 and living vicariously through him and hopefully having a different perspective in, in terms of that. But, but so we have that, 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 that mental spiritual side and we have that physical side. So I mean, as deep as you go the physical the spiritual side, uh, the, the spiritual mental side, I think you have, have to go just as deep in terms of the physical intensity. Sure. There has to be that balance, there has to be that parallel existing line so that they magnetically repel and attract at, at the same time and they maintain that balance. But if you just have that cerebral energy, um, you, you're, not, you're not going to reach that audience. Uh, you know, it was interesting. I mean, I, I love the movie Michael Clayton. I think it's an absolute mm-hmm. fabulous movie. But I was talking to some young friends of mine, young friends, late, late teens, early 20s, and, 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 and um, they said they didn't get the film. And I, I understand that. I mean, it was a mature person's film. They, they, and it required a, a bit of work. They, didn't, didn't, they found it tough to follow at, at times, you know. I mean, it's a brilliant film. I, I think it's absolutely impeccable. But it was just interesting hearing some young people mm-hmm. say, saying that. So, so I, I think you have to counterbalance the film. And then, if you do that, I think you can have have something that has some resonance, some 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 merit, and then still have um, entertainment. Mm-hmm. Andy Garcia, Plus, we I deprive everyone in the theaters of drinking any liquids while they watch the movie. <laughs> Just to make the point. <laughs> what is your uh, hope uh, for the main takeaway from the film that you hope audiences will get beyond the exciting thriller uh, factor? Well, I mean, our first responsibility is to make a movie that has resonance. It's a good movie. You know, this, um, I always go back to the Dizzy Gillespie quotes. There's only two kinds of music, good music and bad music. You know? And we, we're trying to make good movies and movies that have resonance, that, you know, that work as a film, that work as a story, that the story moves you, that makes you think and provokes your, your thought process and, and goes for the ride, makes you joy, cry, makes you whatever, you know, all the elements, of the, and depending on the genre of movie you're, you're dealing with. So that's, that's our, you know, we're, we, that we have that that responsibility to make mm-hmm. a good film. You know, we're filmmakers. We're not, we're not politicians. It's not a soapbox. It's not a propaganda film. It's not a documentary. It's a film. Having said that, we're gonna we're gonna try to do things in a, in in this case because the genre is we're dealing what we feel is in a realistic tone. We want to be you know historically as accurate as possible as uh, within whatever poetic licenses you take to weave the story. You want the things to have real resonance, you know, and you want. The joys and the pains to be real joys and real pains. You know, there's no, you know, the last thing you want as an actor is to be caught acting. You know what I mean? So, and now if you take that idea, you know, to the whole, you know, the last thing you want people to think when they're watching a movie is that they're watching a movie. Yeah. You want them to be engrossed in the story where they forget. You know, they, 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 I've heard several comments today throughout the day that the movie felt to them sometimes like if they were watching a documentary. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I find that to be a compliment. I, I you do know? too. I do and too. I remember that you told me uh, while we were working that you had a call from someone, I think it was from Sony, when they were watching dailies of yeah. me and Forrest, yeah. right? And they said, it didn't, it, they said it, this doesn't feel like a movie. And I thought, well, I, that's pretty good. That's about yeah. as good as you get. You yeah, know? You, you had said that they said it when I'm watching Andy and Forrest, it sounds like I'm watching a it, documentary. It, it, you know? Yeah, it didn't feel like a movie. It, it just felt like we were there watching two guys talk. So, Andy, you weren't caught acting. <laughs> that's uh, listen. That's uh, my main objective in life. <laughs> so that's all I try. That just you know, just, uh, that don't get caught. That don't act. Well, Andy Garcia, Damien Lee, I want to wish the two of you best of luck with this film, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, thank you so much. For thank you very much for having us. Thank you.